Thank you, Helen. Ooh, I'm a little lively today. Well, good morning. And I welcome you all to worship here at United Lutheran Church. Welcome to our guests in worship. We're glad to have you joining us this morning. And welcome to those who join us through our radio broadcast and through Facebook Live today. The radio broadcast for this morning's worship is given in loving memory of Dorothy Thompson by Roy and Paul Thompson. We say thank you to them for sharing in this important ministry. A couple of announcements uh, on, starting on page five of your bulletin. Our summer lunches continue at United uh, Monday through Thursday through August 15th. This is our last week. Um, they're served from noon to one. We've, uh, as we enter into this final week, we are so grateful for all our dedicated volunteers and those who have given so generously to make this uh, happen and successful. In the first week, we served 1,032 people. Week two, 1,260 people with uh, one day high of 355 people served, which is uh, uh, remarkable. So for a total of 2,292, someone said we should celebrate the feeding of the 3,000 when we get done. And it'll be, I'm sure it'll be over 3,000. We say thank you to all. And it reminds us of all the hungry people that are in our community and in our neighborhood. If you turn to page six, you'll note that there is a back-to-school barbecue blessing and pickleball. And that's taking place on uh, August 21st from 6 to 7.30 at Optimus Park. We usually have a get back to school uh, blessing of the backpacks. And that's usually been in Riverside, but we're changing it up. We're going to Optimus Park on the south end on 4600 Cherry Street. So take note of that and put that on your calendar. It should be a, a fun time. And then if you look in your uh, the bottom right corner in the blue, what's next at United? some dates to save and uh, follow along with those. I believe that's all the announcements I'll make at this time, and so I would invite you to turn to the front cover of your bulletin to our order for confession and forgiveness, and please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is found on page six of your bulletin.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us join together in our prayer of the day. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that, strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
The first lesson comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 4 through 8. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones in a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to whore of the mount of God. Word of God, word of life.
second lesson comes from Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Word of God, word of life. Please rise as we greet the gospel reading. to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that has come down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> and please be seated. Well, food in the summertime can be especially delightful. One day in June, Peter and I stopped in our United Neighborhood Gardens. We each picked a ripe strawberry and popped it into our mouths. And that sun-warm fruit was a burst of flavor and sweetness that bore little resemblance to the strawberries that we usually purchase at the grocery store. And if you visit the farmer's market or have a garden of your own, sweet corn picked early in the morning can be on your table for dinner. 
four. There's the smell of food cooking on the grill. Chicken and vegetables for one of our summer favorites, fajitas. Also, the slurpy happiness of biting into a slice of chilled watermelon. Yum. And just recently, it's been the cheesy goodness of Deke's Pizza being served to our neighbors at the summer lunches. Of course, in the summer, as all through the year, food is always about so much more than just nourishing our physical bodies. Food is delight. Food is memory. Food is connection. A bite of sweet corn and we're back at a summer corn feed at Peter's parents' cabin. Grilled fajitas mean gathering together with family and friends in our backyard. A taste of watermelon and I'm smiling at our granddaughter's delight in this fruit as she puts down more than you would think a three-year-old could. Yes, food is always about more than just the food. In every season, the scriptures of both our Old and New Testament are filled with feeding stories. I don't think it would be a gross exaggeration to say that the Bible is a culinary manual, concerned from start to finish with what to eat and how to eat and when to eat. Food is the way the Bible shows us that God intends to provide for humanity from the very beginning. All of those seed-bearing plants and trees given to Adam and Eve. God provides food for the people in the wilderness, even though they're complaining and not thankful. Jesus feeds 5,000 with baskets of leftovers, and it all came from what appeared that it could never be enough. And then, then there is God's own self as food. Jesus tells his baffler, baffled listeners in today's gospel reading, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This week's Old Testament reading is, again, another feeding story. And yet we find there the prophet Elijah in no mood at all to eat. He is in the wilderness and he's at the end of his strength. He's in despair. He is just ready to be done. He does not want to face the hardships of another day. The backdrop to this story that we find in chapter 19 is Elijah's dramatic and violent defeat of Baal's prophets in 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. In a mountaintop scene that is worthy of a blockbuster film action to rival Deadpool and Wolverine, Elijah calls down fire from heaven, decimates his opponents, and proves to every person there that Yahweh is the true God. But when the showdown is over, even though Elijah is victorious, he isn't elated and energized, but he's exhausted and depleted and he's frightened. He knows that there is trouble still lying in wait. King Queen Jezebel is furious about Elijah's success and she's issued a death warrant forcing Elijah to free, flee for his life. And so we find him today after many hours of running as he finally just collapses under a solitary broom tree and prays for an end to it all. And then, exhausted, he just falls asleep. And what follows is one of the most gentle and tender passages of the entire Old Testament. Elijah wakes up to the touch of an angel who says to him, get up, eat. And when Elijah looks around, he sees that the angel has prepared a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water for him to eat and drink. And Elijah, still sleepy and despondent, he nibbles and he sips, but not to the angel's satisfaction. 
And so she rouses him again, and this time with the words, get up and eat, otherwise the journey is going to be too much for you. And at the angel's second invitation, Elijah obeys and eats, and his strength is renewed. In fact, he's able to endure for 40 days and 40 nights on the nourishment of that one meal. There's so many tender details to love in that story. And one of the things that I love the most about it is that the angel never minimizes the difficulties of Elijah's journey. She never says, hey, buck up, Elijah, your situation isn't so bad. There's a lot of other people who have it worse. Or, what happened to your faith? Or, don't worry about it, it's all downhill from here. She doesn't say any of those things. Instead, she says, eat. Eat, Elijah. Eat because the journey is hard. Eat because you're not going to make it on your own. Eat because God longs to nourish you with life-giving food for this journey. The angel doesn't take away the difficulties that are ahead of Elijah. No, instead she feeds him. She feeds him for the journey. And she sends him fed, not famished, strengthened, not weak, accompanied, and not alone. You and I, we maybe haven't had an experience just like Elijah's, but we know the power that comes from being fed. It's as simple as a friend inviting you out for a cup of coffee, and with that coffee, offering conversation and connection. It is as important as urging you to eat after a surgery or illness in order that you might heal and gain strength. It's as powerful as people showing up at your door with plates of food saying, eat, when in your grief you would rather lay down and die. It's as purposeful as the church showing up on the lawn with grilled hamburgers and slices of watermelon and homemade bars and lemonade and saying, eat, you matter to us. And somehow in a summer lunch, shining a light on what God is like. God is like a picnic on the lawn. God is, God is like a picnic on the lawn, a picnic where everyone is welcome and no one has earned what they receive and everyone is filled with good things. In this week's gospel reading, Jesus compares himself to manna, another ancient and powerful food source. Manna sustains the Israelites in their long wilderness. And so it is with Jesus. Jesus desires to sustain us and to be our bread for the journey. Whatever road it is that you're traveling right now, whether you're running full on or you're just stumbling along, Jesus meets you on the way, and Jesus fills us with love, grace, forgiveness, and hope, food for our real fears, griefs, and struggles. Eat, Jesus says, and he is offering us his very self. Not simply information about God or even spiritual truths about God, but Jesus is offering us himself a life-giving relationship with God, a relationship that sustains us for the journey, nourishes us for loving service, <clears throat> and promises to never, ever let us go. From its very beginning, the church has been a community of followers in Jesus who gather regularly around a meal. And in the meal, given to us by Jesus on the night before his death, we see not only bread and wine, but Jesus himself present with us as he has promised to be, feeding us with himself. The bread and the wine are vessels through which we receive the gifts of God. Jesus himself, 
the love poured out for us in the cross and resurrection, forgiveness of our sins, and a foretaste of the feast to come. I've been wondering this week, could it be that it's as simple that faith begins and ends with a meal? The church has been doing a lot through the years to make the matters of faith oh so complicated. We think of faith as correct doctrine and good theology. We define faith as a system that identifies who's in and worthy and who's not. We suggest that faith is dependent on the right church order and practices, or that faith is finally about our good table manners or good behaviors. But what if faith is as simple as eating and feeding? What if the church is just a group of people who acknowledge with our open hands that we need what God has to give us? What if the church and a sip of wine and a taste of bread is those who know that their present and their future are in the hands of the one whose love has been poured out on us, the one who will never let us go? What if the church is those who arise from the table of Jesus to go out and be for the world what we have received here as grace and gift, Christ's own body broken for us? What if Christ's presence in ordinary bread and wine opens our eyes and our hearts to see Jesus present in the whole of our lives, Jesus present here and now in every ordinary and extraordinary moment. D.T. Niles, leader of the Church of South India a half century ago, defined evangelism in light of Jesus, the bread of life. Evangelism, which is a church word for sharing Jesus with others, Evangelism, he explained, is one hungry person telling another hungry person where to find bread. Today, we are invited again to feast on Jesus, the bread of life. We come to the table once more with open hands because we need what God has to give us here. We need God's grace. We need the people who are standing or kneeling next to us. We need what God alone can give. And here in a sip of wine and a taste of bread, we receive God's grace poured out on the world in the cross and resurrection. Here in bread and wine is the promise that somehow God's grace is enough. It is a feast. It is eternal. Today we are invited again to the table of Jesus and then called to rise and be for the world what we have received, Christ's own body. And the radical act of the Christian faith is to welcome all to the table as Jesus did. Jesus was offensive to so many because of who he chose to invite to the table. May we embody Jesus' welcome for all who are hungry. Today, we are invited again to the table. Here is Jesus, the bread of life. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen.
confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus, bread of life, you feed us with your very self, that we might be nourished with your love, forgiveness, hope, and relationship. Bind us together around your very self as a community of faith, that we may feed the world with your love. Merciful God, we rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do. We pray for trees that offer shade and for our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for forests and wilderness areas. Merciful God. Guide our leaders and nations with a spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. During this election season, may we be guided by truth and justice and the common good of all. Merciful God. Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as ELCA World Hunger and our local food pantries and especially our summer lunches. It's volunteers and those who come to share a meal and fellowship. We work and pray for a day when hunger is no more. Merciful God. We pray for this congregation and all who are gathered. Be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill. Especially this day we pray for Janelle Bowman, Don Santangelo, Carol Lee, Vern Grandson of Carol Collette, Linda Schmidt, Catherine Dorsher, Donna Larson, and all those we, and the, the loved ones of Cole Jenkins. And for all those we name before you in our hearts. Merciful God. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith, trusting in the promise of the resurrection. We find hope in your communion of saints of all times and all places. Merciful God. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with those around. You may be seated as we receive our morning offer.
you please stand and as the gifts are received, we join in our offering song. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is with thanksgiving that we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one at the table of the Lord, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all are welcome. You may be seated and the ushers will direct you forward and with those assisting with communion, come forward at this time.
Please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in the meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 879, For the Beauty of the Earth.